Today I decided to do a Dark Souls challenge run. I decided to pick a pretty simple one with no weapon upgrades. We chose the warrior class and the master key for our starting gift. We chose the warrior class just because it has some pretty good starting levels and the master key just to uh, move around the map a bit easier. Here we move past the asylum demon and then move straight on to grabbing our starting class weapons. We say hi to Oscar real quick, use him for his Estus and the key, make a little slip up trying to do some speed running strats or something, but we get the key eventually. Here we go for the classic plunging attack on the Asylum Demon. This guy's honestly pretty tired of this, uh, considering it's happened to him for the past decade, but that's alright. We can take him down with some ease, because it is the uh, tutorial boss, so he's not that hard. Here we drop into Firelink Shrine and start our early game collecting. Here I collect uh, Homeward Bones. We move down into the catacombs to collect our uh, main weapon for this run, which you will see shortly. First we have to collect these Eyes of Death to actually descend down to Nido to collect our weapon. Here we join Nido's Covenant and we get our weapon. Grave Lord's Sword. Now we can finally start playing the actual game and we're gonna move on to our first boss. Cutting through Undead Berg, we go into the house, grab our pine resin, definitely don't get hit by the barrel, and go into the Taurus Demon boss fight. First we clear out the undead soldiers on top. Use our gold pine resin. Taurus Demon's fight is very easy with the pine resin buff. It ended about three seconds after the end of that clip. Here we uh, definitely do not die to the dragon. Now here we're going to grab some gear to help us on our journey. We're gonna go through New Londo Ruins, use our master key for the second time in this run.
do a speedrunning strat I found. We skip the bonfire here because bonfires are for the weak. Grab the Grass Crest Shield for the increased stamina boost. Hit the Crystal Lizard out of spite. Run through Dark Root Garden. Quickly say hi to Andre. And grab the Bonfire. Here we open up the shortcut to Fireland Shrine and definitely do not die. Here we're right outside of Gargoyles and we once again use our Gold Pine Resin to buff up. This fight is very easy especially with the tail cutting stun lock. And the second gargoyle goes down just as fast as the first one. Here we ring our first bell of awakening. Homeward back to the firing shrine and put all of our points into strength so we can wield the Grave Lord sword. We get the fap ring. And we begin our descent down to my favorite part of the game. I bet everyone can guess it. It is only the greatest and most fun part. Yep, you guessed it. Blight Town. After we get off the elevator, we immediately run to the bonfire. We head straight to Quaylog, which is a very easy fight. All you have to do is just sit by the legs of Quaylog and uh, she really can't hit you. All you have to do is watch for a big nuke explosion attack, but it's also very easy to tell because she'll duck down. Here we ring our second Bell of Awakening. Hit this guy because he was talking all the smack. Get a free Firekeeper's Soul. Here I decided I was going to try to kill the Ceaseless Discharge, which I definitely did not die to. After that defeat, I decided to leave him for later and go back up the elevator, which I also definitely did not fall down. Here we're going to reinforce our Estus Flask with that new Firekeeper Soul we got. We're going to go back towards Andre because now Sen's Fortress is open. We also get another Firekeeper Soul. 
here we run through Sun's Fortress, which is not as scary as it seems. You just run past everything. We're actually going to collect a weapon we used throughout the run here. It's inside this mimic, but if we use a Lloyd's Talisman, we can get it without having to fight him. We get a Lightning Spear, which is actually pretty nice. We get done with Sun's Fortress, we grab the Secret Bonfire before Iron Giant. All we do at Iron Giant is hit his ankles until he inevitably uh, falls over, where we get an insta-kill. Now to my real favorite part of the game, in Orlando. We say hi to the Firekeeper, reinforce our flask one more time. And we decide to upgrade our Vitality and Endurance, and from this point on in the run, the only upgrades we do are towards Vitality and Endurance. Here we get another big player in this run, which is the Crystal Halberd. Going down a long, cool elevator. Here we go over top this very, very high fall, which I definitely do not fall down and die on. Now we get to the big lever which we will push down. Here we just run past every enemy because we really have no business fighting them. Now we just have to cheese this archer, he will try to hit us, but end up just killing himself, falling off the edge. Sadly, we see uh, no Solaire in this room, like we usually do. Sorry, Solaire. Here we grab some weapon pieces that we really don't use through the run, but we grab the Dragon Tooth, Howl's Great Shield, and of course, uh, Havel's armor set. What we do grab down here that we actually use is the club. We do the staircase skip to get to Ornstein Smog a bit faster. Ornstein Smog was actually a pretty big. Uh, Pain in the ass during this run, but it is for most runs. We went with killing Ornstees first and then dealing with Super Smog. Um, once we got the hang of it though, it really wasn't that bad. But we did have to resort to using the Crystal Halberd, which actually worked out pretty well. Does much, much, much more damage per hit than our sword does. And Smoke went down a bit easier than we thought he was, even though he's uh, quite a bit beefy. Still close fight though.
One of the hardest bar bosses in the run, down. Here we talk to one of my favorite characters in the Dark Souls franchise, 100% because of uh, lore reasons. And she gives us the Lord Vessel. Here we come back and I do not have the 20,000 souls for the crest of Artorias, so sadly Andre has to bite the bullet and die for us to continue the run. Here we go, and we uh, are getting ready to fight Sif. He's actually one of my worst boss fights, and I 100% struggle against him every single time. It took us several attempts, but uh, at the end we got him. We did have to resort to the Crystal Halberd again, but uh, later in the run you'll see that we move away from it, and actually our Grave Lord Sword really does become a key part of the run. Most people feel bad for Sif at the end of the boss fight because it starts limping, but for the amount of times that Sif has killed me, I, uh, yeah, I don't really feel that bad, hence the celebration afterwards. Now we've placed down the Lord Vessel like I should have a while ago. Here we're going to go for our first Lord Soul, which is actually going to be Seath the Scaleless, and we have to go through the Duke's Archives to go get him. we got to fight this pig on the way. We take care of him and his buddy and get the bonfire. Get to the elevator without uh, dying. Here we take the scripted death against Seath. Make our great escape. Get the key to open the large door. Find the hidden bonfire. Find another weapon we use in the run, which is the enchanted falcon. Here we start doing shortcuts, and we definitely do not die here due to gravity. We finally meet Seath and his boss fight is actually pretty underwhelming once you know uh, how his crystals work. It's really not that bad, you just gotta tuck right in between his weird crystal stomach and his tentacles and you can kinda just go ham from there. One lord down. We do a little bit of leveling here. Here we put our first Lord Soul in the Lord Vessel.
And now we head down to New Londo Ruins where we're gonna get the key to the seal. We're going to pull the lever and drain the water. And we're gonna fight the four kings. This fight is really just a big old DPS test. It's not that bad once you figure out how it is. It's just, uh, it's kind of annoying. So we put some bulky armor on to tank hits. If you get real close to him, you take a lot less damage. And I might or might not have celebrated quite a bit early on this fight because I died a few times. Here we see the uh, lightning spear in action. That we Lord Soul number two down, and we put it right into the Lord Vessel. Here we come back to the Ceaseless Discharge and actually kill him this time without dying. He is uh, quite an annoying fight in my opinion when you don't cheese him. And we take out the Demon Fire Sage. Also kind of annoying fight, but he's not too difficult. Just a bit jumpy. Here we grab the Bonfire. And move immediately into Centipede Demon. We cut off his tail and kill his tail because his tail actually turns into a whole different enemy. We get his ring. And then take out a centipede demon. If you get him out of the lava, he's actually a really easy fight. I saved you guys me running through all the lava, but here's a secret bonfire a little bit closer to the next boss fight. And here we are sliding down the infamous slide down to our next Lord Soul. The Bed of Chaos. I actually did quit outs in between each of these. It just makes it a little bit easier. Here we didn't use a weapon, we just punched the tree roots. I definitely didn't die a few times, um, but hey, that was fine. Here we get the second bulb, just like the first one. Did another quit out. Almost died right here, very, very close, but we dropped down just in time and just beelined for the bug. Lord Soul number three. We put the Lord Soul in the lower vessel. And now we gotta get down to Nito, the person who actually gave us our main weapon for this run. We do some little skips just to get down a bit faster and not have to go through the full catacombs. Now we have one of the easiest boss fights, which is Pinwheel. Um, yeah, we didn't even give him a chance. He couldn't even get a single attack off on us, and that was the end of that fight.
Here we say hey to Patches and go look at the treasure that he has for us. He ends up kicking us off the ledge. We did this on purpose though, so we can get the lantern. And we meet back up with Patches and get our get back for that disrespect he showed us. Backstab, done. Ended up taking his weapon, but we never used it during the run. Here we go, getting all the way to Nito. The run is pretty long and annoying, but his boss fight really isn't that bad. We armored up and sort of just faint, face tanked most of his attacks. He, uh, he ends up killing most of his skeletons for you, surprisingly. Our crystal halberd actually broke during this fight, so we killed him using his own weapon, which I thought was pretty funny. But there you go, last Lord Soul down. Here we're putting in the last Lord Soul. And I skipped all the running, but here we are fighting Gwyn. I decided to try to parry him as much as I could. And yeah, I am leaving the whole fight in the video because this is definitely one of my favorite boss fights in this game. And yeah, and I do think it is one of the hardest. Here we used our Grave Lord sword. Uh, the Crystal Halberd probably would make this fight a bit faster, but I do think that it is for the best that we use the Grave Lord sword, considering I made it the main weapon of this map. You can actually see throughout this fight me getting just a bit better at parrying Gwen. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm not very good at getting away from his grab attack as you can see. And that's it, Lord of Cinder down. We did this run without talking to a single blacksmith, did not upgrade a single weapon piece or armor piece. But yeah, see ya.